While hybrids have long dominated corn production, wheat producers never fully embraced the few hybrid options made available in the past. In recent years, however, seed companies have begun reinvesting in the development of hybrid wheat seed. Both corporate and academic researchers believe the recent, nearly complete mapping of bread wheat's complex genetic code will improve the ability of scientists to blend traits like high yield, disease resistance, and drought tolerance in hybrid seeds. If you want to measure the, the interest in hybrids, I think it's, it's interesting to just look at the number of companies that list them in their, uh, their announcements to, to shareholders. And uh, right now, the, the five or six largest uh, companies working in wheat breeding all have, at least in their portfolio, some, some interest in hybrids. Sousa, Bayer Crop Sciences Director of Global Wheat Breeding, works in a newly built $17 million facility near Beaver Crossing, Nebraska. Much of the research is focused on wheat hybrid seed development. And Bayer isn't alone. Seed companies Syngenta and DuPont Pioneer are among those in the hunt for the ideal wheat hybrid. According to scientists, corn hybridization is a relatively simple process where pollen is transferred from plant to plant. Wheat and soybeans are self-pollinating plants, however, making crossbreeding more complicated. Wheat hybrids started in the 1960s with the identification of the sterility factors that would allow the cross-pollination. There have been several commercial attempts uh, that have, uh, some have succeeded for an extended period of time, others have failed, largely due to the um, inability to manipulate the genetics, that is, track the genes needed for the hybridization system in wheat. Since 2005, a group of more than 1,100 wheat breeders and plant scientists in 55 countries have worked together to map the wheat genome. Last year, after nine years of work, the group released a chromosome-based draft genome sequence in the journal Science. Just to give you an example, the entire set of chromosomes for rice, or all the genetic information in rice, would fit into only one of the 21 chromosomes of, of wheat. So that gives you an idea of just how complex it is. Both Syngenta and Bayer officials say they expect to release a wheat hybrid by the end of 2020. While the majority of the research appears to be using information from the genome map, many scientists are still using traditional breeding methods. Sousa says there isn't any work being done on genetically modified wheat at Bayer's Nebraska Research Center. However, the work on GM wheat is taking place elsewhere in the world. We are investing in a wide range of technologies, primarily because we think that different consumers, different uh, countries may have different levels of acceptance of that technology. Because of the timelines to develop these technologies, it's hard to know what public perception may be in the future. Nebraska farmer and seed dealer Mark Noble said he believes there is great production potential for GM wheat, but doesn't think the public is ready for it. If people are telling us they don't want uh, GMOs, then I don't think we're going to have it in wheat. I think most uh, companies and universities would be scared off of that. Hunger and things like that change, change things. It's just like electricity. Uh, people don't like a power plant until their power goes out. Then all of a sudden they're okay. And I think that's be the same thing with uh, food. Some people don't like GMOs until they don't have some food. And then I think the GMOs might be a really positive thing. Noble expects that the new seeds, which can take more than a dozen years to develop, will provide a modest boost in yield. The incremental advancements from what I've been told is going to be more like what sorghum was years ago, probably more in the realm of 10 to 15 percent. I think uh, maybe to keep expectations reasonable. Noble imagines being able to select a hybrid that will not only yield better, but also work best for secondary customers. He imagines a niche hybrid seed market that can begin with the farmer considering more precisely what a particular mill or bakery might want with their flour. Professor Sunish Sagal and his South Dakota State University research team take these desired traits into account as they analyze hundreds of winter wheat varieties each year. We have about uh, 900 crosses every year. We, we test about 15,000 head rows. And 
in yield trials, we test about seven to 8,000 plots every year to identify one line which can be released as a superior variety, which is better than what is available, and solves some of the challenges in which the producer is facing. After evaluating the top wheat varieties in the Great Plains, from Texas to North Dakota, Segal and his team crossed the best with other wheat varieties developed at the university. Those that show the best mix of disease resistance and extreme weather tolerance are tested in field trials for several years. Finally, they study which varieties also produce high yields. Noble says it seems as though wheat farmers have been waiting for that perfect hybrid for decades. I think our uh, wheat breeder here at the university said one sign that wouldn't have gone out of style for the last 25 years is hybrid wheat is right around the corner. We will have to come together on, on the cost of the seed and we will have to get enough uh, incremental advancements out of this hybrid wheat to justify the producer to use it or hybrid wheat won't last. Noble, like others, still believes, however, that the next five to 10 years may finally offer the breakthrough hybrid varieties that work for both producers and processors. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.